all right hey guys this is trey here and today i want to show you guys how to build a simple api gateway if you're not familiar with what an api gateway is it's basically just a centralized place for requests to be made to your apis so instead of um, consumers making requests directly to your APIs they make it to the API gateway and the gateway job is to handle those requests and send them to the correct APIs and get the responses back to the sender so um, today I will just be beginning to make um, the server setting up the server and stuff and then from there we'll just continue going on creating the um, gateway adding more features as we go along so um to start off with i will be using node.js and also as you can see st uh, visual studio code um if you're not familiar with node.js i uh, suggest you go watch a um, tutorial on how to use it also we will be using express and axios if you're not familiar with those they also have um, tutorials out there so let's go ahead and begin and just to start off with, we're going to uh, run npm init-y. This is going to set up our Node.js project. And once we have that done, we have some dependencies that we need to install. We're going to install Nodemon. So we're going to run npm i-d because this is going to be a development um, package. So we're going to install Nodemon. And what Nodemon is going to do for us is Whenever we make changes to our server, we don't want to have to keep um, stopping it and then restarting it to um, update those changes. So Nodemon is pretty much just like a live server. It will update the changes um, as we go. Also, we need to install Express and Axios. Express is going to be pretty much what we use to handle our um, requests and everything. It's just pretty much a, a, a server thing. And also we need Axios and Axios is going to be for our, to handle our HTTP requests. And pretty much that is all we're going to need at this moment. So let's run NPM I, we're going to um, install Express and Axios. And then you can just let those install. All right, once those are installed, we can go ahead and begin our programming. So I'm just going to create a file called gateway.js. There it goes. All right, and in this file is going to be pretty much our main app. So um, this is where we're going to establish um, pretty much just like the, the actual starting of the um, server and everything like that. So. Uh, to start off with, we're going to need to establish an express variable. So let's go in here and then we're going to um, say require express. And once again, if you're not familiar with express, please go watch a tutorial because I will not be explaining pretty much that stuff. So next we're going to create our app express. All right, from here, we're going to need to set Express to use um, JSON. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say app.use express.json. All right. And then from here, we need to just start up the server. So we're gonna say app.listen. And then I'm actually going to create a port variable here and this is what port our server will be running on so I'm just gonna set it to 3000 port and then this also takes a callback that we'll use just to uh, print out that the server has actually started so we're gonna do console.log and then we're going to put in what is it uh, let's do gateway has started on port and then we'll put the port in here all right now we should be able to start up our server but before we do that let's go ahead and run I mean let's create a script to run this um, server 
So under this scripts tag in the package.json, we're going to type in dev here. And then we're going to type in node mod and then gateway.js. All right. So in our package.json, we're going to go under the scripts and we're going to create this script that's going to be called dev. And the script will, when it's run, it'll run node mod and it'll call our gateway.js to start up our server. So in order to run this, we need to type in npm run dev. Oh, I didn't save the file. Let me do that. Then do it again. All right. And as we can see, our console.log has printed out that we are running on port 3000. So this is good. And now we can go ahead and begin creating our um, process for handling the requests that come in going out to other APIs. So uh, the way we would do this is we're going to um, create a an endpoint and we would do this by saying app dot use and then this is going to take a path and the path is just going to be slash for us right now and then it'll take in um, some routes that we are about to create. Now um, this routes hasn't been created. We're going to go up here and do that now. So if we go up to the top, we just do const routes and then we're going to say require dot slash routes. Now we haven't created this um, folder yet. Uh, we are about to now, um, but this is where we will house all of our routes uh, that will be used to handle the request. So uh, whenever we send a request to this server, on port 3000 with just a forward slash it will use this routes um, file that we're about to create so let's go up here create a new folder we're gonna call it routes and inside of the routes folder we're gonna create a file and we're gonna call this index.js so in this index.js is where we'll actually have the code for our routes um, the reason why we can just call dot slash routes instead of dot slash route slash index is because um, it's going to automatically look for this index.js file if you know you don't specify it here. And since this is the only um, file we're going to have in this routes directory, um, we just do it this way. So let's go ahead and save this. And now I'm getting this error down here because we actually haven't defined any routes in this file. So when it tries to run this, it's saying, hey, there's nothing going on here. So let's actually create that so we can get rid of this error. The way we do this is by establishing our express variable, same way we did in the gateway.js. Require express and then from here, we can go ahead and get our router. Now the router is what we're gonna to use to actually route the HTTP request. So we're going to take express.router. All right, so now we have our router and let me go ahead and export this router before I forget, because I tend to forget. It's gonna be module.exports equals router. All right. So now we can go ahead and create our first endpoint that um, we'll actually use. So what we're going to do is go router dot all. This all method pretty much just takes any of the um, HTTP um, types, method types. So it's going to be get, post, delete, all of those, um, update, and all that stuff will be taken in here. So um, let's just do... Um, the path that we're going to use is going to have a path variable in it. So the path variable, the path variable will be API name. So this is going to be the name of whichever API you're trying to call. And then from here, we're going to um, use a callback 
because the second parameter takes a callback, which is going to have the request and the response objects in it. And inside of this callback is where we handle all of the logic. So once we um, get this API name, we'll know which way to forward this this request. But as of right now, we don't have any APIs that are registered and any of that. So what we're going to do is just return this API name just to make sure everything is hooked up and working correctly. So the way we can do this is by using the response object. We're going to call res response.send. And then in here, we're going to get this, this, uh, this uh, variable here, this API name variable. So we're going to do that by going request dot params dot API name because that's the name of this variable in here. So uh, we will be sending this back whenever there is a request for slash anything pretty much. Um, anything you put here will match. So it's going to be slash whatever and then it's going to send that whatever back to the caller. Um, and we can also log this on the server. Actually, we're just going to say request.params.api name. And then let's also add a new line just to make this a little prettier once it comes out. Um, and now we can see that that error is now gone and we're back to saying gateway has started on port 3000. So I'm going to clear this and get a new terminal up. Now this terminal is going to be used just for me to make a call to this um, API here. So, well, not the API to the gateway here. So um, the way we do this is I'm just going to be using curl and I'll call curl. Um, you can use Postman or anything. You, you, I think, yeah, you can actually use your browser for this too. It should work fine. Um, but I'm just going to use curl. And then I'm going to call HTTP slash slash. And then we're going to call localhost. And then on port 3000, because that's the port that we decided to run this on. And then we can pass in anything here. I'm just going to pass in hello world though. And we should get it to come back. All right, see. On the server side, we log this hello world, which is line five here. And then on uh, the, our caller side, we got hello world back because that's what we sent back. So this is pretty much how we're going to handle requests coming in. So basically when we get a request, um, we'll just check the API name and then forward that request with the same headers and everything to the um, the API that's being called. Um, also, we can add security features in and checking and, you know, it's a lot of stuff we can add on. Uh, we'll probably do that later. But as of right now, I think this is a good place to stop for this first video. And when we come back, we will add some more features and functionality to this. All right. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe to the channel and all that jazz. And I will see you guys in the next one.